I've had the pleasure of hosting dozens of business to business masterminds in the past few years. Some of them with hundreds of people, each paying anywhere from one to $3,000, to others being more intimate, 30 to 50 people paying $50,000. But I can tell you that the common theme between all of them was that it was one of the best uses of my time as the CEO of a business to business company that I could ever do. In this video, I wanna walk through four reasons why you should be hosting masterminds inside your company and then I'm actually gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of hosting your first mastermind the first reason why you should be hosting a mastermind for your clients is what Warren Buffett calls a moat and this is essentially the idea or concept that your business has something that makes it more difficult for other people to copy it. Now, and a great example of this could be if you had something that was patented, meaning that somebody else couldn't copy you, or if you offered something that was incredibly difficult for somebody else to learn. Now, inside of our world, I run an online company, it's very simple for people to try to copy everything that you're doing, whether they see your ads online, they go through your funnel, or even previous clients of your own. But I can tell you that one thing that is incredibly difficult to copy is masterminds. And that is because the amount of work and energy it takes to set up and host the mastermind, not including the costs involved, is massive. And most people don't wanna go through that amount of work or they are unable to. But if you're able to not only host the mastermind, but host a world-class mastermind, which we'll talk about in a moment here, where people actually get value, they have fun, they learn, they network, then it's gonna be very difficult for anybody else to copy you. Even if somebody else was able to copy everything that you're doing, if they don't host masterminds and your masterminds are amazing, that will always keep you with a moat from yourself and your competitors. The second reason why you need masterminds is because they build client communities. Now, I'm really proud to say that we've done a great job at Scaling with Systems building an online community for business owners that are looking to scale. But most of these interactions happen online. And of course, in the first few years, I met some of my clients whenever I traveled or I went to a new city. But one of the things that masterminds are able to do is they're able to get together hundreds or maybe dozens of people that are clients inside your company for the first time in person. And I can tell you as somebody who runs a 40 plus person remote team, that there is a big difference in having somebody that you're talking to over Zoom, even if it's every day, and actually being able to shake somebody's hand and hang out with somebody for a few days in a different location. The best marketing, advertising, and websites in the world will not beat out an incredible client community because a great client community will send you referrals time and time again, and they'll also keep on buying your products and services time and time again, which is always massively more profitable than just trying to acquire new customers. The third reason why you should host a mastermind is simply because it's a lot of fun. I just came back from a mastermind I hosted in Medellin, Colombia, where I had about 35 of my top clients come out and we spent three days learning and having a bunch of fun. We went out to rooftop bars, restaurants, and then we went whitewater rafting all day on Sunday. And it sometimes blows my mind that each of these people paid me $50,000 to come down here for the weekend and learn from me. And obviously they came there also to learn and network from other people as well. But it blew my mind because here I have now created a business that serves my lifestyle. I love Medellin, Colombia. I love hanging out with super talented entrepreneurs and I love learning. And I was able to do all these three things while getting paid for it by simply hosting a mastermind. And by the way, that made the entire thing a write off. Now, if you're watching this IRS, don't worry, I kept all my receipts. And the fourth reason why you should host a mastermind is going to be because of the content. I can tell you that having a mastermind, having videos and photos of you on stage teaching and speaking to other people is incredibly powerful for both your brand and your direct response marketing ads. Having yourself where you are in an authoritative position is amazing for anything that you do. It has been proven time and time again that even if you just have somebody on stage Stage speaking to an audience and them looking up at that person, that ad will convert, at least for me, much higher than if it was simply me just standing or talking in a video by itself. In addition to that, you can actually take the clips and the video of the content of what you're speaking at that mastermind, and then you can give that out to your YouTube channel, you can get it out to your larger community, you can put it out on other social media platforms, and that's almost always what we do. Even for our large event every single year, Scaling with Systems Live, which we host in Miami, there's a 
few hundred entrepreneurs that come to that. I always tell my team that I don't really care how much money we make from this event. All I care is that we get as much content as humanly possible because that will pay for itself time and time again in what we do in the years leading after the event. So at this point, hopefully you see why it's important to host a mastermind. Now let's talk about a few of my best tips for actually hosting your first mastermind. The first thing is that there is a critical mass of people that you should be having at your mastermind. What I mean by this is that anything less than a few dozen people that you're hosting at an event will be almost useless. A useless in the sense that you could probably spend your time doing something even more effective, such as building your community or clients larger before you hosted the mastermind instead of actually hosting a mastermind with three to four people. All of those other things that I talked about before kind of go out the window if there's five people sitting in the room listening to you speak. So instead, what I recommend is working on acquiring more customers and then when you have, let's say, 15 to 20 people, you can host your real first in-person mastermind. Uh, what I don't want you to do is spend all this time, energy, and money just for three to five people to show up. Now, when I first hosted my mastermind in 2019, I didn't know that anybody was gonna show up. I'm really blessed to be able to say that we sold out almost 100 seats within 24 hours of me posting it online, but it still was a little nerve wracking because I had to put myself out there. But of course, I knew that we had a large email list and a large following online, so I knew that it was likely to hit. Which brings me to the point number two, is to decide whether you want to have just clients, free people, or a combination of both of those together. Now, this is important because what I have learned as being the leading indicator of you having a successful mastermind is not what you teach and it's not where you host it, it is simply who is coming to it. If you host a mastermind and you have a bunch of beginners and you teach something for absolute experts, then it's probably gonna make people feel uncomfortable there together and it's gonna probably make some people feel like they've wasted their time. Instead, what you should do is make sure that you're curating exactly who the mastermind is for. And even if you host it for free people, you should make sure there's some kind of application process where you can turn people away that aren't in your ideal target market. Market. Now, the third thing I'd recommend doing whenever you're hosting your first mastermind is make sure it's a mixture of both learning and fun. This is a mistake that I made when I first started hosting my masterminds where I just did all learning. I did all teaching. So for three days straight, for nine to 12 hours a day, I would simply be speaking to or at my clients, teaching them everything that we were doing to grow our business. And sure, it was really valuable to a lot of my clients, but at the same time, it wasn't really building that community and it wasn't building that moat that I could separate myself from our competitors. So instead what we started doing was we stopped having a mastermind on Sunday and we just did Friday and Saturday. But then on Sunday, instead of teaching, what we started doing was we started doing fun events like going out on a yacht in Miami or going whitewater rafting at Medellin, Colombia. And this allowed us to create an environment where everybody wasn't having to listen to just one person speak, but instead you can network, learn, and do business with other people that were at the event. And my final recommendation when you're hosting your first mastermind is try to put it in a a remote location. Like I said before, I've hosted dozens of masterminds and most of them have been in large metropolitan cities such as San Diego or Miami. Recently, we hosted our second international mastermind. The first one was in the Canary Islands in Spain and this one was in Medellin, Colombia. And I can tell you, as far as community building and networking, it was 10 times more powerful than we had it in a metropolitan city. And I think that's simply because when you bring people to a remote environment, they don't have the typical people and like places that they can go to that they have usually gone to anytime they visit there. For example, anytime someone comes to Miami, I'm sure there's dozens of people, places, and things that they want to do when they come to Miami that don't include hanging out or experiencing our community. Instead, if we go to an island off of Spain or we go to Medellin, Colombia in the mountains, they don't really know anybody else there. So they're almost forced to build a stronger and tighter community. And I saw that this past week in Medellin, Colombia. People who had never even met them, uh, each other like literally a day before were joking laughing and pulling them out of like freezing cold water when we went water rafting on Sunday the bottom line is that in-person masterminds is one of the most simplest and effective ways to grow your business today and I recommend that you don't overthink it you don't try to make it perfect the first time that you do it but instead send an email blast out to your audience today see if they'd be interested and start planning now so last year in April of 2021, I hosted my first ever live event, Scaling with Systems Live. We had about 220 people there, and of the 220 people, I had 20 people buy a $50,000 upsell that I pitched at the events. And what I wanna walk through in this video is how I was able